Hi, I'm Kevin Limity with uh, KDH News, and I'm here today with Councilwoman Jessica Gonzalez. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Cool. Um, so maybe you could start by telling us a little bit about your background, how did you end up in Colleen, and, and what do you do for a living, and that sort of thing. Okay. Well, I'm from Colleen originally, so backing that story up, my dad was military, retired here. He did three tours in Vietnam, and my mom was a teacher for KSD for like 40 plus years. Um, and so I grew up here. I graduated from Colleen High School, and this is home for me. So um, Colleen is, is what I know. <laughs> hmm. And um, what are some of the goals that you have as a councilwoman that you are trying to accomplish right now? Okay, so some of the goals. Um, originally, I was charged with um, helping to come up with some clear and concise communication, um, helping people understand exactly what was going on on the back side of our house to figure out how we can make things actual, actually better. Uh, my charge for my constituents was no nonsense, let's get to the meat and potatoes, let's fix whatever's broken so we can move our city forward. So starting off with that, um, we were able to get a lot of things repaired and, and um, a lot of things are now in process. But moving forward, some of the vision has expanded, right? With our comprehensive plan, we've got a lot of growth and uh, economic development, things that we want to see here, right? We want to see improved jobs. We want to see an improved quality of life here for our citizens. We want improved roads and infrastructure, especially on my side of town, you know? Um, we want to see revitalization, a true revitalization of our downtown. Mm -hmm. Right, so that's a big project. Um, the re reconfiguration of the Rancier to Fort Hood corridor, um, that is a huge, huge plan on the infrastructure side. And then on the quality of life side, my big yeah, goal, there's some things I really want to see a, a children's museum here, you know, um, and be nice if it's placed downtown, you know, but there's some, some other things that we're working on on, on a smaller scale. Hmm. And uh, this kind of uh, sort of uh uh, transitions nicely into my next question, which is, um, what are some of like, do you believe are the important issues that Colleen is facing? Right. Um, first and foremost is our identity. I think it's a huge, you said issue, right? So it's a challenge. We need to have a clear understanding of who we are as a community, uh, what our goal is, and what our ultimate vision is, right? So um, if you're a faith believer, you say without a vision, people will perish. If you're in marketing and advertisement, first thing, building 101 is what's the ad, what's the log line if you're in film, you have to have that to be able to set the tone. And so I think here we have a huge um, opportunity because of our diversity, because of our military background, like we're, we've got a lot of strong, um, tenacious, creative, innovative people right here in our own backyard. So I think us capitalizing on that and figuring out who we are as a community will propel us forward as far as um, which direction we, we grow. We're not limited at all, but by ourselves. And that seems to be our uh, battle right now, which we're working through, a comprehensive plan we have used collectively to set that tone. Mm. And um, are there elements in the city which hinder progress, in your opinion? When you say elements in the city, what are you referring to? Well, um, just like that creates somewhat of a blockade on like the city council being able to make progress on some of those goals. Well, first and foremost is money, right? Like, where is the capital coming from? You know, there's there's always that. So when we're looking at our overall, um, how most municipalities make money, um, what are are we doing and are we maximizing our efficiency there so that we are uh, able to do the things that we want to do? Are we capping, tapping into uh, federal grants and programs? Are we working with our state and federal legislators to help us get some of the federal dollars back into our city so that we can do the things that we need to do and help us expedite? Um, that's a big challenge that I think that we are actually actively though working on and um, we're starting to see some headway. Mm -hmm. And um, is there anything that you think that the city council could do a better job of? The city council as a whole? Mm -hmm. Well, always there's room for improvement, right? Um, I, I know that our citizens asked for more communication and I feel that we gave that um, uh, collectively. They wanted transparency and I feel that we have been very transparent on a lot of things and uh, constantly evolving you know, there as well. The city council, I don't want to speak for them as a whole, but I know for me, uh, one of the, the things was I don't prefer to be in the limelight and that's kind of weird when you're in this kind of um, field. I would rather be with the people who are doing the work in the trenches. And so unfortunately what happens in that situation is 
they don't see you and so they think that you're not working <laughs> and then you see the results of things that happen which is wonderful but they so for me it's more um, you have to show the good and communicate those things too right so showcasing all of the good things and featuring the good things that are happening here as well as uh, featuring and promoting the work that's actually being done so finding a balance in that I think is important mm -hmm. Because sometimes we just want to work. We don't want to, you know, have to do. But you do have to pause and, and do those things so people can actually see the good that's going on around them. Hmm. Um, do you think that there's more that the city could do to uh, give residents things to do recreationally and that sort of thing? Of course, right? There's always room, and that's the quality of life piece I was talking about. You know, um, for years growing up here, I would hear people say, "Well, there's Colleen. Oh, they don't have any money in Colleen." That's the furthest thing from the truth. Uh, we have a lot of people who have a lot of value here, but we're taking our resources and our funds out of the area, and it's most unfortunate. Um, we have so many talented people in this area. There's no reason why we cannot start to capitalize on that, and it's a win-win for everybody at that point when we do. But entertainment-wise. Um, you know, we're starting to see that movement downtown with uh, more eateries and uh, places where people can, can uh, gather. If you like live music, we're bringing that. If you smoke cigars, that's coming too. If you love the arts and entertainment or want to have a creative outlet for your children, there's things that are coming that are in process. And there are a lot of great things that are already here. But again, we've operated for so long in silos. And that's another thing that I think that we can do better collectively as a community is promoting those things that are going on and getting on the same page because there's plenty for everyone when we do it together. Yeah, you mentioned uh, children's museums. Is there <laughs> is there any like other sort of like um, uh, thing that you would like to maybe attract to the city that could serve uh, as a recreation, not just for like children but for anyone? So we have when you it, it depends, right? There's a lot of things that. Um, that there are for young people to do, whether you're talking about sports, right? We have a lot of sports organizations, uh, cheer organizations. I used to coach cheerleading volunteer for years uh, with the Boys and Girls Club, and that was very, very happy and um, a very important time of my life. Um, and so there's cheerleading and there's all those types of art programs, music programs. Now we have theater and film programs, podcasting programs. So there is a little something for everyone here, which I think is nice. Um, I just think that we need to figure out how to just maximize it so that we can help more people get involved. Um, on the the uh, the museum side of the house, so for me, the reason why is just personally, I used to have to take my kids all the way either to Austin or to uh, Houston to go to the Discovery Museums where you can touch and feel and like science and all that cool stuff. And um, it would have been nice to be able to stay here and have those things for them to do and to explore and learn about science and nature and things like that. So um, that's what I really would love to bring ultimately as a finished product here to the City of Clean. I'll keep working on that one too mm -hmm. after the fact because um, it's not something that will happen overnight, obviously. Right, yeah. Sounds good. Um, I did want to ask about um, uh, what progress there has been made on bringing a grocery store to North Killeen because um, I had heard that there was a visit from, um, I believe, KEDC um, to uh, Tulsa for like a site visit. I haven't heard much since then, and um, I just was wondering if you had any updates about that or if you, like anything from Oasis or anything like that. Yeah, so um, officially, no. Um, I know that they are still working in progress. They did have that meeting, and I, my understanding is that it went well, and there were some great conversations that uh, came from that. Um, they're still working on the construction um, feasibility study, which we knew that was going that one particular one was going to take some time. And I think then from there, we'll get to hear back from them with a recap of the uh, first one with the construction and then the next steps, you know, moving forward from there. The beautiful thing is the wheels are still moving. There's still people that are exploring opportunities to bring boutique style groceries, large scale groceries. They're still exploring opportunities for um, for our citizens here because they still see that there's a need. So my hope is that something will uh, break sooner rather than later, you know. This didn't happen overnight, but I'm very pleased with the progress that we've had here recently. All right, but um, are there any plans to maybe uh, do a site visit like uh, Mayor Nash King was saying that they might want to do? Um, I believe they've already done that. Um, I'm not certain, so don't quote me on that, but um, I know that that was part of the plan, and I think that they have already set those wheels in motion. If they haven't done it, I know that it's coming up soon. Okay. That's fine. Um, 
we've spoken a little bit about this, but can you tell me, um, maybe explain your position on doing an internal audit or not doing an internal audit on the um, unpaid or uncollected uh, developer fees? Yeah, listen. So, you know, looking at our city, there's a lot of things that we're finding that um, maybe weren't done the most efficient way or we need technology updates, which is why you see a lot of our department heads coming in and asking for updates on um, technology and things like that. We've moved a lot of our departments forward in the first two years, which was great. And there's still obviously a lot of moving parts here, and a lot of work to be done. So when it comes to audits, I'm definitely in favor as long as we have an intended purpose for this audit. So in this case, I do think it's warranted for that particular department because there are so many components to it um, to really get down to where um, where we can improve, where we can make sure that all of the pieces are, are connecting. It's really important on a community development um, department because while we're all here and the current people are all in this in place right now, soon we'll have builders and developers coming in from outside of the area and they need to have a plan and process and a clear and concise understanding of this is how it goes, this is what I do, the next step is, and so they have an expectation that's been set. And that's my, my hope is that this department, um, of this departmental audit, which I'm in favor of, um, will lead them to make a good process and get something solid in place for, for the future. Right, okay. And um, uh, we did like a pretty, pretty uh, big story uh, previous Sunday about um, some of like the connections um, that council members have to real estate and uh, so I wanted to ask you if you feel like you have any conflicts of interest in regards to that. Yeah, no. Um, while I sold real estate for many years before, I do not sell real estate now. I'm a licensed realtor, but my focus, um, as I mentioned before, um, is in portfolio management or property management on the residential side. So there's no overlap here. I don't work directly with any of these builders or developers um, in any way, shape, or form. I work with private investors from all over the United States. So I would say no um, as it relates to this, no conflicts here. Okay, that's fair. Um, and I just wanted to also ask you about the um, architectural standards ordinance, which you know, was once again, or it was sent back to the city staff. Um, can you explain your position in regards to that? Because, um, you know, does Colleen need to have like better or different like uh, building standards? So it's, I do believe so. I, I did not vote for it originally um, just because I thought there were some things that were pretty restrictive within the, um, the standards that were being proposed at that time. However, I do think that there should be a standard or a baseline that's set, right? But I also believe there should be flexibility in that because, again, um, I don't believe that governments should be telling private citizens what you can and can't build and what it should and shouldn't look like within reason. So I say that to say that we do have to have some sort of some sort of standard, especially if we're moving forward, we're talking about uh, rescaping, reshaping that Rancier area. That that becomes what are the signs? What are the what do the fascias look like on that 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 strip there? What are the sign height requirements? There's what are the the home buildings uh, when we have certain developments? What what at a minimum should they look like so that we can keep a certain aesthetic um, in our area? And that's really, again, part of us in branding. Uh, we do have to have something that sets us apart, and that's what they're working towards with those those designs. So I do think it's important to have a basic foundation, but I don't think that foundation should limit the development, because if I'm a private business owner, I come in, I want to be able to put my sign, not the city sign up there, but fall within the guidelines, obviously. All right. I mean, I remember um, being in downtown Colleen, there was like not too many like tree cover in, in that area. And I remember uh, thinking that that would be like a nice thing to have like in that area. Like, do you think that having like some kind of like, like ordinance standard might be might improve like maybe having that kind of um, what do you call it? Not vegetation, but like tree cover. You were talking about just added trees in the space. Or mm, yeah. About, yeah, I think it's I important. Mean, it's important. Yeah, I do. I do. Because it help, not only aesthetically, it's beautiful, um, but it, it's it's inviting, mm. right? It doesn't feel so um, medical, so industrial. Um, we want it to be an inviting place for people to want to come to live, work, and play. It, we want to have a beautiful city um, that's representative of our 
again, our cultural diversity and everything else. So you mentioned like downtown, that's also one of the projects we didn't get to talk about, but there's an area that uh, we'd like to have like a Veterans Memorial Park um, in that area. So we've got some green space that can actually be used. Okay. So if we have concerts outside, there, there's vegetation, but if you want a picnic, you can go there. If you want to, you know, just have family fun gatherings, you have the space to do that. I think that is very important. Yeah. I mean, there was like a, uh, um, there was an, a uh, proposed ordinance, maybe like a very long time ago, like years ago, mm -hmm. that like said that there's something along the lines of like, one tree and like two bushes or something would have to be built alongside of like any kind of development and that was a while ago but like could, could something like similar to that actually be like um maybe it may yeah so i think that is actually part of um some of the conversations that we've had with regards to our standards and and development um when we're talking about building out those areas what does that look like are we lined with trees um there's a couple things that go into that you know whether you're talking about um the rooting and you have to look for the future obviously because when trees roots start to grow what does that mean for the areas around them so but that is conversation that we're having that is part of our comprehensive plan is building more green space and creating more um, to your point tree coverage and, and bushes to make it aesthetically pleasing um okay um okay that's all the questions i have but um i wanted to give you the opportunity if you had anything you wanted to uh say directly to your constituents or if you uh wanted to maybe mention something that otherwise wasn't asked and you didn't get an opportunity to say. Well, thank you for that. So yes, to the citizens of Colleen, <laughs> um, I think it's very important that we remember, you know, who we are as a community, that we are not limited by anything except for ourselves and that we deserve the best here. We can have the best here. And it's not going to be easy, which means that we're not going to always agree eye to eye, but there are ways in which that we can get done what we need to get done to move our city forward. Um, I'm really excited about the potential for our city. There's a lot of great developments that are coming, um, a lot of business industry leaders that are relocating or considering relocating here. So the opportunity is ours. It's right at our fingertips. I just love the fact that we do come together to work and show our ability to um, to unify behind a common goal. So I, I really just want us to know that work is actually being done and that we understand the big picture and that we're all part of it. We're all part of it, so that's it. All right, thank you. Yeah. Okay, this has been Kevin Limity with KDH News and I'm here with Councilwoman Jessica Gonzalez. Thank you very much for watching.